Hey guys, I don't know if you're like me, but I love Count the Dings and everything it has to offer. I just can't find everything I need. You know, I know about Cinephobe and I know about the mailbag and I know about Bomb, but that's all we do, right, I mean? No, we do so much more. What? Yeah, absolutely. If you sign up, patreon.com slash count the dings, you'll find a plethora of other content, fresh content, extended content, the OG pod overflow, the Cinephobe cold opens that we've taken and made their own thing to live only there. The Rewatchingtons bomb and it's full Ooh. and unadulterated cut early drops of Cinephobe episodes and so much more. Said the OG pod. Now, is it new or is it old? Mace, I'm glad you asked that. It is a new incarnation mm -hmm. of the old OG pod. Oh. So it's me, Zach, Trey, Waz, Tom. I love those guys. Just like we always were going back to the true hoop days. Mm -hmm. We're recreating that magic, recapturing it and putting it back out. We're talking hoops. We're talking pop culture. And most importantly, we're talking for 40 minutes for free. Mm -hmm. But then another specific Patreon exclusive segment for every one of those episodes. Funny enough about that OG pod, you're getting Tom and Trey on Mondays. You're getting me and Waz, aka Zosny, on Wednesdays. Amin's floating in between. I'm a floater. You never know when you're going to get Amin in those, so you got to listen to them all. And what if I'm not sure what Maze looks like? Because I've always thought he's a fat man with a fedora. He's got a weird voice. How can I see for myself what this Maze character actually looks like? It's crazy you don't know the answer to this mm. because it's the Cinephone pod youtube page what the ct5s on the cinephobe pod youtube page you can look at all of us you can get all the og pods on youtube too at count the dings one on youtube at cinephobe pod on youtube patreon.com slash count the dings gets you everything all in one feed you can link it to your spotify and now enjoy the show this podcast contains mature content, explicit language, suggestive situations, and partial to full frontal nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Don't let your kids listen to this. I'm concerned about something, guys. I love how this has become the confessional. It's not confessional. I'm just... What are you confessing? You know, we started this podcast as a labor of love. And the idea was, hey, there are all these movies that are poorly rated on Rotten Tomatoes. Ass on. What? You. What? Whatever this preamble is. Did we? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to cut you off at the knees before you even start. Uh, guys. Just keep going. What the fuck? Like, I didn't even say anything. I'm just talking about the podcast. You lied off the top, but continue. This podcast is about watching movies that are poorly rated on Rotten Tomato, and a lot of them didn't get a fair shake, right? In many ways, we're trying to right some wrongs. How many didn't get a fair shake? Do we know that percentage? Have we looked that up? Probably all the ones that you filed, I would say, right? Well, no. Isn't that the point of the show? Well, I mean, that's a lot of cinema. <laughs> it would have to be, I would say, anything that's 66% or more, like two out of three or more, those are the ones that didn't get a fair shake. For the honest files, sure. But that's not my point. My point is, we were trying to like shine a light on some movies that didn't get a fair shake. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this, what, five years, four years? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, we started in 2019. In those four years... I'm beginning to realize some of the movies that are getting made now are getting a fair shake. So they don't qualify for Cinephobe. So now we're left with all these movies that are really not good. I bring this up because of The Beekeeper. Like yeah. I was like, oh, this is a perfect Cinephobe movie. I saw the trailer. And then today I looked at the Rotten Tomato score and it's like, oh, fuck, what are we doing then? Everyone's going to just love it. We don't know if it's good or not. We know it's good. <laughs> if I told you, hey, I got a premise for a movie, okay? Mm -hmm. This is 10 years ago. Yeah. Someone kills Keanu Reeves' dog and he gets revenge. You'd be like, oh my God, come on. What a ridiculous premise. It turns out it's a great movie franchise. So you tell me, all right, Jason Statham's a beekeeper. Sure. I'm going to think the British love honey or something. I don't know. The most flammable liquid is honey. <laughs> It has all the makings of a classic cinephobe movie. No, it doesn't. Liam's not in it. No, no Liam and no terrorism. It's a cosmic mix of the action of the 90s combined with the exploitation films of the 70s. But with modern touches, it's hyper-violence, but it knows that it is. It's a little bit Tarantino. It's definitely a little bit Michael Mann. It's kind of a cosmic gumbo. It almost moves to the beat of jazz. Wait, 
people are genetically inferior, or they're culturally crippled, or they're socially deprived. How come God couldn't make everyone one color? Like tan. I wish I'd fucked a black broad before I got married. I could really feel 400 years of oppression and anger in every pelvic thrust. I can smell horny across an ocean. <sighs> Not all women. Good for you, man. Good for you, good for you. Just the hot one. Hello, Oprah. You're not allowed to go down on me for one month. No, Judy, Don't please. Don't make me take away your masturbation privileges. Yeah, I'm horny too, babe. Hey, Charmin, come on down here. Well, you want to exercise my dominance. It's scaring me. Getting a patriarchal urge. Just keep doing what you're doing. We're a team. We work together. I don't know if you were paying attention. <laughs> I was. Please, God damn it! Just one more drink! I'll call up your tits with a knife, you bitch! Five whiskeys. That's breakfast on the river. Yo, you have to clip it, Maze. Clip what? A fucking tiger? What are you talking about? It's not that hard. Just chop, chop, boom, out. Wow, Maze has a really hard job. This is going to be the worst episode we've ever done. My people don't give a ding-dong diddly about what flag fly over Hawaii. You bore me, Fury. Where is the Mikro film? He's nothing but a bag of meat and flesh and tendon. Why didn't they just name him Spaghetti Lasagna? Fuck, this movie's two hours long? Not the whole thing. This is like the John Gruden emails of movies. Do you like ducks? Or a trench coat full of bees flying around? Like, that would scare me. Bees, bees, bees are that. cool. That's a duck, man. No, I get it. Coolio. You're the devil's baby mama. I didn't lie, Annie. I just didn't tell you certain things. Don't play no reindeer games with me. An American ninja. What are you talking about? There is no such thing. gotten rich off of the people in this town. <laughs> you bet your ass I have. And I'm gonna get richer. Coglin's Lure. Go into incredibly descriptive details of the story so we all know. Oh man, I wish I had better notes. Have you ever heard such a pail of shake? Once I get a DVD player, I'm gonna watch Gallo Walkers once a day. Come here and give me a squudge. You know what to do from here, internet. <laughs> all right, cool. Let me Google how to open quick time. Justice is blind. It's got space dementia. But it can be hurt. Time to find out exactly what this ooze can do. Pull the fucking rabbit out of your dick and phobe. I'm Temecula's newest hard on, dog. Hey, look at here. Why don't we eat us a few thousand beers? You can tell me what's buzzing in the big bad city. Come on, yeah! Look out for the You, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out. Welcome to Cinephobe, the podcast. We break down the movies you're afraid to admit you love. I'm Zach Harper. That's Amin Hassan. That's Anthony Mays. Listen to us on Spotify or Shaq is going to dunk you. Repeatedly, in slow motion. Or Nick Nolte will spit all over you or something. I don't know. Whoa. He spits whenever he talks. Oh, yeah. You don't notice that? Notice it. I'm counting on it. <laughs> I knew you'd spit that. <laughs> spit good. Spits good, huh? <laughs> Spotify is where you can leave a comment where you can vote in the poll, like the poll for Tammy and the T-Rex, mm-hmm. 131 phobes, 90 files. 90. That's 59% phobe on Tammy. The people liked Tammy and the T-Rex more than Jaws the Revenge, 76% phobe. Driven, 68% phobe. And MVP, 83% phobe. So suck on that, you bingos. Do they just like the episode? I think the episode is what's influencing them because... Sometimes I think... 
that is confusing. Yeah. Some people are voting for the episode versus the movie because as we've done in very rudimentary polls before, most people don't watch these movies. Right. They literally just listen to us and that's it. Like Jabe22 says, I refuse to listen to the pod until you pick quality movies. Well, maybe you listen to this episode then. Welcome back, Jabe22. You dipshit. That's not the pod. Do you get what we're doing here? Yeah. It's possible. <laughs> Go be one of the 13 people that listens to Cinephile, okay? Like, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Those people don't exist. And then on the other side, you've got Casca saying, they needed a softcore porn scene with Denise and the T-Rex, and this would have been an all-time banger. I need the review of The Last Godfather. If she fucks that T-Rex. Well, it's insinuated that she did, right? No, but if they show it. Right. And, like, his little hand is moving around and shit. Well, imagine how they would have done the dick. Well, that's not softcore. Softcore, you don't show dick. I probably would have filed that. Just for the confidence and the belief yeah. to actually make that happen. What if he fucked her with his tail? And then you've got an unpronounceable series of letters and numbers that says, I can't believe that you had me watching Timmy and the T-Rex. It was a bad movie, but I actually liked it. What? I hate you guys. Four exclamation points. Keep up the good work. Thank you. That pretty much covers it. Let's get all on the same page about exclamation point. One's enough. Okay. No, no, no. Because you see, if you put more... Then you're more excited. excited. Yeah. One tells me you're excited. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I don't need a lot. Look to me in my eyeball. And that goes for user reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Yo. I don't need 15. I had myself a day today. You sure <laughs> did. You want to? Uh, we'll save it for another day. <laughs> Make sure you leave in your CT5 suggestions, your CT5 lists. Check out the CT5 on the show feed every other Monday. Make sure you subscribe to that Patreon, patreon.com slash count the dings. You get access to all of our rewatchington live events, the old ones, the new ones, the current ones, the future ones, all of those future ones. You get our entire cold open. You want this one. Trust me. This is a long one. <laughs> this is a good one. If you want to hear about fraud. And you are getting those ad-free episodes. You get into the Discord, chop it up with us, chop it up with other fans. And also, check out the YouTube, at CinephoPod. Yep. You get the CT5 episodes in its entirety on video. You get clips from movies. And I just put up, several months ago now, the Cinefeud 3 Cineparty video. Cineparty, as I call it. <laughs> which I didn't put up because it was kind of a weird camera angle. But the response has inspired me that we should do one of those again. I think Amin's got a better chance of this now than I do because he listens to a lot more old episodes. You'd be surprised, though. <laughs> I think we can do it new and improved. It's been a year and a half since we did a Cineparty, so that could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Check out the YouTube page. Subscribe. If you have a submission, submit it. <laughs> Provider needs to be 40% or lower on the Rotten Tomatoes audience or critic score. All right. Amin hummed us with Driven. I chimp dodged us with MVP Most Valuable Primate. Maze checked out our roundies with a gnome named Norm. Nice popos. And now Amin is canonizing a movie about a white knight in February with the 1994 sport drama Blue Chips. Ah, oh, sports drama. Oh, okay. How about that? What if it just says sport? Not sports. That's a very European. European yeah. international thing, yeah. One sport, but multiple maths. They call it maths, not math. I hate that. But they call it sport, not sports. I hate maths. It sounds so stupid. Look, we get it. You dropped out of college, okay? <laughs> I was good at maths. <laughs> were, were you? <laughs> oh, my God. I could, Oh, you kidding me? Yeah. Aced it. Is that because you were counting how much tuition you saved? Financial aid fraud. <laughs> I was counting all these discounts on Oakley classes. That's what I was doing. <laughs> I have one of my favorite notes coming up in this episode. You still got them, Oakley? Blue Chip stars Nick Nolte, Shaquille O'Neal, and Anthony Penny Hardaway. Nolte is now a three-time repeat offender for Hulk and the Zookeeper. I wish I knew how to quit you. What a resume. He had The Player and Lorenzo's Oil in 92, this movie and I Love Trouble in 94. Oh, that's a file. And Mother Night in 1996. Mother Night, holy shit. This is truly mind-blowing to me. This movie is fresh off Nick Nolte being named People's Sexiest Man Alive in 1992. Really? 1992 was a rough year. Did you ever think at any point in this movie, you know what? He's got it going on. People knew about Denzel back then. Denzel won in 96. He was still sexy as fucking 92. Yeah. Zach, he was a late bloomer. <laughs> 
I want to put together a little people's sexiest man alive right before they did a cinephobe movie list. Oh, that's a good idea. 96 Denzel is around virtuosity. Mm -hmm. We've got Ben Affleck right before Gigli. Yeah. He looked terrible in Gigli. And it is some kind of list. Let me read you the synopsis for Mother Night. An American spy behind the lines during World War II serves as a Nazi propagandist, a role he cannot escape in the future life as he can never reveal his real role in the war. So people just know him as this guy that's delivering Nazi propaganda. And he can't be like, no, 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 it was just for the war. Like, I'm a spy. He can't do that. <laughs> I, I don't want to watch this movie. Does reality change sides at any point? It would have to. In my <laughs> notes, I have movies that I'm like, fuck this canon shit. Let's just get through it as fast as possible because I'm going to have a bukkake. But you can't. Because you're an integrity-filled podcaster. There it is. The name is on the screen. Leaking out. Shaq was in CB4, Kazam, Space Jam, Good Burger, Steel, Chairman of the Board, He Got Game, The Wash, and Repeat Offender, Jack and Jill, Grown Ups 2, and What Men Want. I wish I knew how to quit you. Shaq's in Freddy Got Fingered? Shaq's in everything, man. Penny was in an episode of Cosby. Also stars Mary McDonald, JT Walsh, and Ed O'Neill. Mary was in Dances with Wolves, Sneakers, Independence Day, 74 episodes of Battlestar Galactica, and 105 episodes of Major Crimes. She was the president's wife in Independence Day, and then she was the president in Battlestar Galactica. Ah. That's how I know her. President's wife. JT Walsh was in Backdraft, A Few Good Men, Executive decision the negotiator breakdown and repeat offender for loaded weapon one i wish i knew how to quit you he's on a run here career character actor he delivers a line in the movie breakdown which is a movie about kurt russell and his wife are on a road trip and she gets kidnapped and jt walsh is trying to describe her he's some stranger he's like you know brown hair about five seven 130 pounds about eight pounds of that is tit it's always stuck with me <laughs> such a weird line man Ed, not that Ed, was in Dutch, Wayne's World, 260 episodes of Married with Children, and 250 yeah. episodes of Modern Family. 510 Woo! episodes of hit TV. That dude cashes checks. That's as good as it gets. Yep. No, that's Jack Nicholson. The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. Little Giants. We also get Alfred Woodard, Bob Cousy, and Matt Nover. Alfred? Butler? <laughs> England? Crumpet? She was in Scrooge. Alfre. <laughs> You fuck. What? It's a woman. It's not Alfred. It said it on the thing. Alfred Woodard, man. Alfred Woodard. Woodard. Oh, then maybe it was a... Not Alfred Woodard. Alfred Woodard. I don't know. I think it said Alfred. What do you mean you don't know? You know who Alfred Woodard is. All right. It was a... It was a... It was a Come on. Correction. That was autocorrect. I don't know what to tell you. Dishonest. <laughs> Broadcaster. This is like when you called AZ as. <laughs> no, that one was a joke. <laughs> that one was setting you up for a thing. This one was just a typo. I must have typed Alfred. Alfred was in Scrooge Radio, Future Cinephobe, and Kate Pax. He said it again. <laughs> yeah, that time I said it on purpose, you idiot. God. She's also in that fraud David Sampson's favorite movie, Grand Canyon. <laughs> Can I just say this about David Sampson? Go fuck yourself, all right? Go fuck yourself. And that's not like show bit. No. I legitimately hate that dude. <laughs> I have to edit him talking. I fucking hate it. Why did they say no? Like, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Got him fled. No. <laughs> Got him fled out of this episode. Fucking Baldwin. No. <laughs> Bob Cousy is from Celtic Pride and being 10 and 17 in the playoffs before oh. Bill Russell joined the Celtics. There's a lot of Cousy <laughs> slander in this episode. <laughs> Matt played Ricky Rowe and it's the only thing he's ever acted in. Is it Silk Cozart? C-Y-L-K? It's got to be Silk, right? Yeah, I think it's Silk. Repeat offender from Eraser. I wish I knew how to quit you. Anthony C. Hall. Mm -hmm. Repeat offender from Virtuosity. Kevin Benton. Repeat offender for Street Kings. I wish I knew how to quit you. This movie has a lot of people playing characters who have the same name. Ed and Ed. I think that's to get through like the basketball part of it. But Silk is an actor. Tony is an actor. Well, Larry the Cable Guy is an actor. Well, Silk plays Slick. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Subtle difference there. Marcus Johnson from White Men Can't Jump. Adjacent repeat offender since Josiah was on his show. Yeah, I'll allow it. Robert Wool from Bull Durham, Batman, and Arliss. Is he playing Arliss in this movie? Sort of. I don't know. 
because he only appears in that one scene and never comes back. Right. What is Arliss doing here? And he looks like Arliss and he's acting like Arliss. Bobby Knight from Anger Management, Rick Pitino from He Got Game, Larry Bird from Celtic Pride and Space Jam, Nigel Miguel from The Air Up There, Jim Beaver, repeat offender from Next. I wish I knew how to quit you. Gary Vitti from The Lakers, Jim Beheim from He Got Game, Alan Houston from The Knicks, Rodney Rogers from The Nuggets. Alan Houston also from Black and White. Albert Chaney from The Bullets, Bob Hurley from The Kings, Geert Hammock from The Magic, Demetrius Caleb, repeat offender for Eddie, Rick Fox, repeat offender for Eddie, George Lynch from The Sixers, Chris Mills from The Warriors, Rex Walters from The Heat, yeah. Lena Banks, repeat offender for Loaded Weapon 1 and Last Action Hero and D2 Mighty Ducks. I wish I knew how to quit you. Jim Caviezel, repeat offender for Ed, Kevin Garnett from Uncut Gems. Kevin Garnett and Jim Caviezel are in this movie? I didn't see KG. I was looking for him. But this is also before we knew who KG was, so maybe you just didn't recognize him. Louis Gossett Jr. Yeah, from Jaws 3D. What a cast. We mentioned in the Jaws the Revenge episode because he went from an officer and a gentleman winning the Oscar to a Razzie for Jaws 3D the next year. Christina Haddad, repeat offender for You Don't Mess With the Zohan, Michael Satterfield, repeat offender for Virtuosity, Showgirls, Great White Hype, The Fan, Batman and Robin, Can't Hardly Wait, Swordfish, Ed, Eddie, and Barbed Wire. I wish I knew how to quit you. And then Persia White, repeat offender for Last Action Hero. Blue Chips directed by William Friedkin. It's the Friedkin Weekend. Oh, the William Friedkin. Knew that was coming. He directed The French Connection, The Exorcist, To Live and Die in L.A., and Repeat Offender for Jade. It's been a while. Can we track that, by the way? The longest time between repeat offenses we just had it wasn't it someone from next it's julianne moore next to assassins oh, yeah written by ron shelton he wrote bull durham whiteman can't jump Cobb, tin cup play it to the bone and repeat offender for the great white hype and bad boys 2 i wish i knew how to quit you greatest writer in cinephobe history it's a great start what's my man hammer skip woods right david goyer no. David S. Goyer. <laughs> did you file Batman vs. Superman? I don't think I did. Well, then you're a fraud. Why am I a fraud? Because he's not the best writer then. No, it's obviously Sly Stallone, guys. Come on. Actually, that's a good point. Oh, that's right, yeah. Put your glasses on and shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh. Hold on, let me start typing. Hunt and Peck typing his way to the top. All right, Blue Chip synopsis. A college basketball coach is forced to break the rules in order to get the players he needs to stay competitive. Tagline, victory doesn't come cheap pretty good yeah that's not bad and then two other taglines if you're gonna win at any cost be prepared to pay the price all right or the other tagline in your face to 1894 oh yeah in your face oh this is back when in your face was a big time phrase oh the 20 cb is that Shaq dunking what's the poster that goes with that i guess this was a little bit before and one but it ended up being in every and one t-shirt the reebok ad Reebok ads, yeah. I mean, it was a Shaq thing, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's got to be Shaq dunking. $35 million estimated budget, gross $23 million U.S. and worldwide. That's shocking to me. If At 26, but yeah, I don't understand exactly, especially coming off a white man can't jump. Yeah. It's a little interesting that that didn't work out. Before we jump in this movie and listen to the rest of this podcast, Blue Chips is available on Amazon Prime. Blue Chips receives 38% on 29 reviews from the critics. On Rotten Tomatoes, 51% from the audience on over 5,000 ratings. Audience, what the fuck? 51? Should be 100%. 5,000 is really low. Yeah. That's as many as MVP Most Valuable Primate. Have people just not seen this movie? There's a part in this movie where I'm watching it and I forgot I was watching it for Cinefolk. I literally just got lost in the movie. Oh, that's right. This is supposed to be eligible? Why? Why is it eligible? I mean, it's like the positive or the negative reviews. Glass half full kind of guy, Zach. Give me the positive. Hey, John. That's weird. That glass looks half full to me. Wow. Now that you mention it, it is half full. Peter Martin of everythingbuthorror.com. But I wanted horror. You want what? Horror. What? Horror. <laughs> the rrrr. Rrrr. <laughs> features an absolutely terrific performance by Nick Nolte and provides evidence that William Friedkin's abilities as a director could make movies that were compelling, lively, exciting, and thoroughly entertaining no matter their subject matter. Sure. Is that like a backhanded slap at the subject matter? Oh, this isn't very interesting. But look at Friedkin do it. Everything but her and spurt. Janet Maslin of New York Times. Oh, your coworker. My buddy. 
If Mr. Friedkin didn't have to work so strenuously framing two shots of Mr. Nolte with the seven foot athlete, it might be hard to remember that Mr. O'Neill has a day job. So it's complimenting Shaq. Yeah, Danny confused the fuck out of me. Scott Weinberg of eFilmCritic.com. Do the voice. Worth seeing for Nolte's force of nature performance and the novelty of Shaq, quote unquote, emoting. It is funny to think about at this point. Oh, look at that. Shaq has a personality. Mm -hmm. And now it's like... Ah, the general. <laughs> Roger Ebert of Chicago Sun-Times. What Friedkin brings to the story is a tone that feels completely accurate. The movie is a morality play told in the realistic, sometimes cynical terms of modern high-pressure college sports. Feels like we have all the right allies on this. Yeah. Janet Maslin, Roger Ebert, Scott Weinberg. Blank Super Reviewer, four out of five. One of the better sporting movies, it seems, with a superb performance from Nick Nolte. This movie shows you that doing everything you can to win ultimately means you may lose overall. One of the best sports movies of all time. It's this. White Man Can't Jump. He Got Game. He Got Game. Major League, I'd throw in there. Major League. Varsity Blues, I'd throw in there. Is that the one with the whipped cream on the tits? Yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> That's why. File. That's what makes it a great sports movie. User Bro Force Squad, four out of five. Yeah. Bro Force. Let's hear it. Squad. I'll do the voice. Blue Chips is one of the best kept secrets of the 90s. <laughs> if you're reading this saying, what the fuck, dude? I love this movie. How is it a secret? Yo, Preston? Preston Myers, Blue? What's going on, man? Then first off, I love you. <laughs> and secondly, most people I talk to haven't seen this movie. I know. What's their deal? Nick Nolte absolutely kills it as a troubled coach. Pete Bell, who faces a dire internal battle between conforming to what seems to be the only way to compete in the modern college basketball recruiting landscape or tarnishing the purest thing in the world to him, the game of basketball. Kazam himself, Shaquille O'Neal, and Penny Hardaway, and Blue Chips is perhaps the most realistic view of a college basketball program we've ever seen on screen. The basketball scenes in this movie are incredible, probably because they had NBA superstars performing them, and Nolte elevates everyone who interacts with him on screen. It's March Madness as I write this, and I can't wait to sit on my couch turn on my tv and watch games where i know probably half the players are being paid but i don't really care for more of the bro four squad check us out at bro four squad.com yep, i will i think it's the second time we've had them before is it i'm not on isn't it welcome cinephone i do love in that Shaq gets revenge on aaron carter video he says i am kazam or he swats the shit out of aaron carter <laughs> I am Kazam! User Russell H, three and a half out of five. Russell Hesbrook. Nolte is great, and the players were pretty entertaining. It makes you wonder about what college sports programs. What? And then blank user, four out of five. If you don't like this movie, you don't like college basketball, Nick Nolte, or America. You got to say that like the Kings announcer. What's his name? Grant Napier, former Kings announcer. Grant Napier. If you don't like this movie, you don't like college basketball, Nick Nolte, or America. That sounds like something that Grant Napier would say, yep. but not about this movie. Something else. Birth of a Nation. <laughs> oh, shit. Mother Night. <laughs> Negative reviews. Stop being a pessimist. This tank is not half full. It's half empty. Tim Stevens of The Spool. While shot dynamically, the camera movements and editing diminished the on-court action. Oh, the opposite. I disagree. I thought it was shot beautifully, yeah. Todd McCarthy of Variety. Didn't he make... No, never mind. I've done this before. I'm in reruns. A deafness-inducing but otherwise ho-hum would-be expose of shady recruiting practices by college basketball programs. Deafness-inducing? What, do you have the volume up? Jonathan Rosenbaum of Chicago Reader. Do the voice. Not even an unsentimental basketball fan like director William Friedkin can wash away all the corn syrup. He thought that was corn syrup -y? Hal Hinson of the Washington Post. I mean, maybe a little bit of the speech at the end, but come on. Yeah. The filmmakers don't get the ball into the Shaq man's hands enough, both literally and figuratively, to make this personable giant screen debut memorable. He's the only one who scores in this movie. <laughs> He's scoring constantly. They threw a million yeah. lob passes and drop steps at him. He had 65 points in that game. I really wanted someone on the internet to have done the box score or whatever, but no, there was no stats. But yeah, it was, yeah, <laughs> it was a lot of Shaq. Well, there was one stat. We know he had 14 rebounds. 13. Well, I don't know. The, the press started guessing it as opposed to taking a box score. Desson Thompson of Washington Post. If it wasn't for some exciting round ball action, Shaquille O'Neal's hulking, dunking presence and a wonderfully guttural performance from coach Nick Nolte, you'd slither off the bench asleep. No, man, I felt like we got a lot of ass off performances. User Garrett G, two out of five. A man named Amin referred me to this movie, but I think this is a phobe. 
Bob Cousy better be happy he acted against electricians and plumbers, or he may be the most ass on acting I've ever seen. No complaint there. Blank user, one out of five. I gave this movie one star. I was not even going to give it that. My BF loves this movie. It's from the 90s, and it shows sports-type movie about a college coach that coaches college students. I don't know. I just didn't like it. As opposed to a college coach that coaches professional athletes or high schoolers or something? High schoolers in the Midwest. Also, DU dumb bitch. <laughs> then last one, blank user, one out of five. A character asks if Shaquille O'Neal can rebound. That's fair. See, it's not, He's not Shaq. Shaquille O'Neal, it's Neon Boudot. Yeah. He's still 7'1 and bigger than everybody. No, but he's raw. He's never been coached, Zach. Yeah. I don't know. I saw him playing three on three with a toilet seat for a rim. and A breakaway toilet seat, though. Yes, yes. I was impressed that despite it. Too short. We'll get a means first note, May's first note, and my first note after these messages. Unless you subscribe to patreon.com slash count the names, in which this is an ad-free episode. Or maybe we don't have any ads and we're just going to roll on through. Who knows? I'm Katie Maloney, 37, a divorcee, and I'm out here falling in love every day with myself. And I'm Dana Kathan, 33, former needy mess and delusional Leo, but I've never been happier. Never been happier. You know that. Good. <laughs> the foundation of this podcast is for people who want to live their life unapologetically. It's a safe space for anyone who's going through a transition in their life or just dealing with the regular bullshit. It's a religion. We're not saying that we're looking to start a coven, but that might be why we started but this we're podcast. Not, not not saying that. Join our cult. I mean, community. I mean, the coven. Religion. Okay, let's just stick with community. Listen to the podcast. Listen to the podcast. <laughs> I mean, what is your first note? Why are they whispering? They're in the locker room. It's halftime or pregame or whatever. The assistant coaches are talking to the team before head coach walks in, but they're all whispering. I didn't know what was going on. Because they know what's coming. I mean, they know the tornado's coming. Yeah. Maze, what's your first note? I mean, I don't want any questioning from you on this this is the greatest opening scene in cinephob history and that means we need to do ct5 opening scenes oh yep i'm into this idea yeah that's a good one i'm into that idea as well i'm not going to confirm or deny that right now i'm going to have to go back and re-watch some of the yeah why don't you consult with your people and get back to us on on whether this is the best opening scene i know i'm filled with integrity so i wouldn't just spout out prisoner of the moment talk his name is an integrity i go back and i do my homework i do my research his name is pierre some of us like to be prepared whoa maze super cut <laughs> of amin saying yep my notes are front loaded i was prepared <laughs> let's just put that right in the intro put that right in the intro some of us like to be prepared agreed some of us do some of us do my first note this is the second best basketball movie of all time, and I don't think it's close. And I love this damn song they use throughout it. Is it a song or is it Toot Steelman laying down some, some interstitials? No, that's a real song. No, that's a real song because they're lyrics and everything. Okay. And they play it like eight times in this movie. It's essentially Hulk Hogan walking around the neighborhood music. No, 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 no. We start out in the Western locker room. Players down in the dumps. Assistant coaches looking worried and stressed, whispering. Awaited in a tornado. Storm's coming. Nick Nolte walks in and immediately says, how bad can it get? Just how goddamn bad can it get? He walks in through that door. His ass is somewhere in that hallway because it is not with him. He left it. Yeah, it's not there. It's by far the worst team that has ever sat in this locker room. It's funny that he's roasting the team and there's a sign on the wall that says, what you see here, what you hear here, mm -hmm. let it stay here. When you leave here, do not take this tongue lashing that he's about to give you outside this <laughs> locker room. You son of a bitches! You don't deserve a locker room. You don't deserve a locker room the way you're playing here. You should be playing without uniforms. You should be playing in jock straps. Jock straps, 20 CB? Yeah, no one wears jock straps anymore, right? His crotch is dangerously close to their faces as he grabs their stuff. Well, the good news is the pants are billowy enough, so That's there's true. no danger of. That's true. There's a lot of room there. God damn it! shit out the locker and throw it on the ground this is pre-game every time we get ready to play i just want to throw up i'm goddamn sick of watching you guys play there's not one of you not one of you that's learned how to win we got hammered the last four games and it stops right now Lock it in, man. Give it to him. Well, yes, but also there's some heavy hitters for us off. I'm not saying that there aren't other good performances in this movie. This is a heavyweight Nick Nolte carrying the movie performance. If you keep playing the way you're playing, we're going to get an ass beat again tonight. So depressed, I don't even want to talk about it. I'm through fighting, you sons of bitches! You're the dumbest king I ever coached. <laughs> 
I fucking lost it, man. I was dying. It's a great combination of anger and depression <laughs> and stress. And it really bothers him to his core that they're not better. You guys think of something. Slams the door shut. The assistant coaches start to give some positive reinforcement, but he's not done yet. He comes right back in. Honestly, Christ, I just want to go home and cry when I watch us play. Don't you boys understand? Don't you know how bad I want to see this team play? I want to see this team play so fucking bad I can taste it. The brother from air up there is one of the players. Yeah. He's 45 years old. <laughs> This guy's not in college. Come on, man. He was in college before <laughs> segregation was disbanded. He looks like he should be sepia tone. Oh, but it's a college coach teaching college students. Honest to Christ, you boys, the only joy I have right now is I don't have to watch you guys play two more games. God damn it! The number of God damn it's Sons, Sons of, of bitches. bitches, honest to Christ, Christ's sakes, yeah, all of it. He's roasting the shit out of his team. It's unbelievable. He throws the water cooler across the room, walks out again. Assistant coaches again start going back to the players. He walks right back Let's in. They go right back to the wall. Start Another time. Up. Pulls up a rolling stool to the middle of the floor. I can't tell you how sick I am of basketball right now. I never thought I'd see the day when Western basketball is in the state it is right now. If I never see another game in my life, that's just fine by me. Dwayne, you can get through college half-assed. Richard, you can get through life half-assed. But I'll guarantee you boys one thing. Sure as hell, I'll guarantee you this. You cannot win half-assed. How do we win this ball game? He kicks that stool across the room. Shit out of it. Pre-game speech. Title card. File. Come on. No doubt. Banners in the rafters. Now we've got the school band playing Here Comes the Hot Stepper. Banger. Let's go! Fans are ass off. This dolphin mascot. <laughs> this bingo dolphin. I fucking love <laughs> this bingo dolphin mascot. They could have done a whole movie showing him picture in picture. He's got crazy eyes. He's nuts. <laughs> Not even cat. What? No, what? I rewound it eight times. I was writing notes, man. He comes back like three or four times. <laughs> what? The fact that their mascot is a dolphin in the first place is hilarious. <laughs> it's so good. But that it's this dolphin? This dolphin. I lost my shit, dude. Why is the fucking top so huge and the little legs a little open? It's the eyes to me, man. Those bingo eyes, man. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't notice. Facing Texas Western Cowboys announce their exposition that Coach Pete Bell is on the hot seat. Potentially facing his first losing season. Victory tonight would ensure a winning season. First losing season and he's on the hot seat? Hey, man. Western doesn't play. If you ain't first, you're last. Yeah, exactly. If you don't win the IndyCar <laughs> racing circuit, you will get fired. <laughs> you will get fired if you're second. Rick Patino's coaching Texas Western. They've got, holy shit, Rex Walters, Chris Mills, yep. George Lynch. They didn't even mention Rick Fox who's on that team. Their roster is loaded. Tournament bound. Put them in the fucking final four. What are you talking about tournament bound? About to run these motherfuckers at the gym. What tournament? The in-season tournament? <laughs> Ed O'Neill can't believe the call against Western. Ass off as a media guy. I thought in this scene he was ass on. No, because we could name a dozen NBA media groups. That do this? That are living and dying by the calls when they're not supposed to. Come on. Come on, man. But it's just the way he did it. I thought it was a little much. Oh, no. I thought it was dead on. Rick Patino is surprisingly ass on. He says... We don't trap four and five. We trap one, two, three, but no coach talks like that. Yeah, I couldn't quite figure it out. I feel like Bobby Knight is a little better later in the movie. Yeah, Bobby Knight's good. Bobby Knight's better because future callback for the trivia. Yeah. Because he's actually coaching. He's not acting. Right. It seemed like Patino was fed these lines. Yeah. Well, I guess this is still Rick before he became really Rick. No, he's at Kentucky at this point, right? He had been with the Knicks. But he wasn't Rick Patino winning national championships yet. 
Because I'm thinking, Rick, why wouldn't you correct them? No one fucking talks like that. We would say this. We would say, trap their ball handlers or whatever. He's just trying to get to the restaurant after the shoot. 60 seconds or less. Pete Bell's complaining to the official, tells him to sit down. Petito goes full of mean and just starts blowing the guy for the call in his favor. That's why you're a good official? Right call. <laughs> you're the best. Dude, I would actually love that if a coach employed that strategy in real life. How does Nolte look and sound more like a coach than Patino does? It's called acting. He's really good in this, man. He really commits. Even in the practice scenes, we teach him how to like set a screen and stuff. Yeah. He's fucking great at it. I was very impressed. He doesn't sound like someone who just picked up something for the scene. Patino does. Ref tells Nolte to sit down. It's his last warning. I'll ring you up. These rims in that ball are extremely 20 CB. Oh my God. Pre Shaq proof, man. Took me back to a simpler time of basketball. Nolte can't believe how the game's going. Texas Western's killing them. Oh, shit. A lot of Pepsi product placement. Yeah. This is what I noted. Rick Fox is on this team? He pulls up for the jumper, right? Yeah. <laughs> Rick Patino looks evil. Texas Western's up by 20. Pete Bell is stressed as fuck, bro. He's got a towel over his head in the first <laughs> half. He starts yelling at Tony. Tony says, Coach, to foul me every time I get the ball. Nolte says, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I fucking love. Goes full Bobby Knight, full Lou Pinella on the ref. Says Ray Charles could have made a better call. The fans love ah, it. Reference. Other ref comes over. He takes the ball. He punts it into the crowd. Yeah. He's out of there. Right before he punts the ball, the camera work here, as it's a Dutch angle and they start to zoom in, you see the spit flying as he's talking. Spit flying everywhere, man. That, to me, was golden dumpster filmmaking right there. Yeah. Freaking directing his ass off. I'm wondering, at this point, is blood pressure a horseman? <laughs> I mean, he gets red real quick. And he's so stressed all the time. He gets red like an Irishman within a half mile of whiskey. Like, he is red. Like a Korean. Oh, what? Like a Korean. Koreans get really red in the face when they drink. Supercharge that? No. Supercharge that? But it's okay to see an Irishman? Yeah, fuck the Irish. It's called Asian Glow and it's an allergy. I mean this respectfully. Fuck the Irish. Cut to him in the shower. Yeah, I think we beat the Irish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> drink this. Bob Cousy walks in the locker room, which is surprising. He didn't need Bill Russell to carry him in there. This fraud Cousy walks <laughs> in with his ass on and Nolte's <laughs> ass on too from the hallway. <laughs> Yeah, he picked him up. He picked it up and said, I'm coming with two asses on. The way he's slapping the program in his hand, I don't buy it for a second. No. Is this going to be the most crowded ass on field in history? Dave Yeager awards all over the fucking place. To me, it's a two-man race. I don't think we've ever had a movie where there's such a disparity. Well, oof. we've got great acting performances all over the place. So many of the actors do a great job. And then you've got all of the basketball people struggling. It's either elite or it's off a cliff. There's no middle ground here. I think we're going to have some disparities here between the three of us. He walks to the shower. Let's coach know it's his friendly athletic director and an exposition director. Yep. Officially commenting on Nolte's behavior tonight. Tells him to relax. End of a long season. He'll feel better in the morning. No goddamn way in hell I'm going to feel better about in the morning. You know I'm going to feel worse. <laughs> I'm just going to get angrier and angrier. The way he wheeze laughs. So incredible, man. Nick Nolte specialty, man. They're both in danger of losing their jobs. Cut to the press conference in front of the giant WU letters. On a cement wall. No step and repeat. Is this 20 CB or is it a didn't have a budget for this. I think they didn't have a plan for this. Yeah. I love this. My congratulations, Texas Western. They're wonderful coaching staff. They played a great game. Any questions, stupid, stupid or otherwise. otherwise? This is where Pop got it from. Yes, Alan. Coach, we'd like to hear your side of the basketball kicking incident. Next question, Alan. You used <laughs> up your question. That was stupid. Golden dumpster. Ed's name is Ed. He's chittering. Do you think it's fair to say your inability to get the program back on track is strictly related to recruiting problems that started four years ago after the alleged point shaving incident? Oh. Hello, exposition. How long are you going to keep this bullshit up, Ed? Huh? You know goddamn well there was no such incident. There was an alleged incident which you invented. In the same way that if I assert that you sleep with sheep, then it is alleged that you sleep with sheep. That's out of line, Coach. What do you mean it's out of line? If you can't take the heat, get out of my face, Ed. God damn it, you know nothing like that happened here. Listen, I didn't say that it happened. I merely asked you if you thought that the allegations hurt recruiting. I didn't say it happened. Listen, if this is the level of questions I'm going to get here tonight, this press conference is over. Ed O'Neill is the Ben McMahon of blue chips. A hundred percent. Perfect timing. Yes. Clip his theme song. He's Ben McMahon, Ben McMahon. He's the fattest dude in all the land. He got Texas blood as thick as mud. He's Ben McMahon. Yeah. 
Howdy, partners. He says to him, if you can't take the heat, get out of my face. I don't think that's how that goes. <laughs> that's not how that is, man. That's not- Speed is everything. <laughs> <laughs> wrong you got it wrong <laughs> speed's the name of the game these students wrecked the fuck out of the outside of this arena oh my god was there a riot what happened i thought they were 500 Did the lakers win the championship like what happened they only dressed this set once yeah. because he walks out of the arena the same exact situation the same pieces of trash in the same places i think they just kept reshooting it yes nice dolphin statue by the way is that real oh my god it's massive <laughs> that statue is ass off okay you can only have one zach the mascot or the statue oh that's tough i'm gonna say ass on because it's breaking the fourth wall it's staring right at the camera well Shaq does too <laughs> plenty of times the statue is saying just act natural just act natural <laughs> everybody believes you're a statue just be cool he goes to jenny his ex-wife's house asks if she watched the game no rebounding you got beat on the boards ah broad who talks hoops jargon oh. she thought the kids played their hearts out then says not put the game tapes in the vcr but then she keeps talking about the game i said yo you need to shut the fuck up about the game if you're not gonna let me watch this film oh, okay well there's a difference between a little conversation with it and here's two hours of your night. She's clearly not doing a little conversation. She's breaking down. I'm really not going to stand for it this time. I know it's coming. I love Jenny. She's not the bitch ex-wife. Yeah. I love the performance. Great. She knows exactly what's going to happen and she's just cutting it off at the knees. She's not what? She's not the bitch ex-wife. Damn, I was waiting for you to say she's not the bitch wife. Like, I agree. She's not the bitch wife. <laughs> He's just agreeing so he can get to the liquor. If he can't watch game tape, he looks around confused and immediately walks towards the booth. Straight to the bar. <laughs> she says, that's the good stuff. The cheap stuff is in the kitchen. Good stuff, cheap stuff. Is that 20 CB? Yes, I think so. If you're going to drink like a fish, 20 CB. He asked how her day was. She had 20 first graders making Valentine's. Nigga, you don't care, man. Come on, man. <laughs> she feigns surprise. Oh, he's saying, can we get a couple drinks in? Can we get a reminder? Fuck. What are we doing here? This is exactly what he was doing. How was your day? Yeah, baby. I'm horny too. <laughs> That's exactly the train he was on. Hearts are tough to cut out. Easier than pumpkins. What? Message. She asked if he's okay. He says Ed brought up the alleged incident again. She calls it bullshit. He's looking at his first losing season. He can't handle it. Don't you think it's a bit much for a 50 year old man to be kicking basketballs up into the stands? He's 50. He lies saying he hopes he didn't hit anybody. He doesn't care. He don't give a shit. He's just trying to get laid, man. I don't do well with losing, do I? And she says, you've won two national championships. Hello, exposition. This is two more than most coaches dream of. You've won eight conference titles. Hello, exposition. I don't call this losing. Is that Cobra formula? You've got great kids. The cleanest courses program in our program inventory. <laughs> they all graduate. And finally, you, you make, make a lot, lot of money. money. Minaj that note. Yeah. <laughs> I could go on and on. Please do. He's a words of affirmation kind of guy, though. That's his love language. Not going to because then I'll get angry. Do you like it when I'm angry because it turns you on? You think it's sexy? Do I look sexy? Yes, you do. Coach is horny. Suppose you want to do a little one-on-one? -on -one? Yes. No. <laughs> no sweet Danny award here, guys. Not at all. There's tension. There's a lot of tension. Big time. Even though she's wearing the unsexiest getup ever. Well, wait till she goes to dinner with those shoulder pads. <laughs> She keeps saying no, brings him to the door. He grabs his tapes with blue balls. Blue chips, blue balls. Why are we divorced again? Same note too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> because you're impossible to live with. Besides that. Good night. He walks home like George Michael Bluth. Charlie Brown music with his head down. He lives in the Driftwood Apartments? He lives in this shitty ass apartment complex. There ain't no vista, there ain't no view, and there ain't no <laughs> vista of no view. <laughs> Perfect bachelor pad apartment building name. This apartment is as depressed as he is. <laughs> Holy shit. He's got a shitty director chair in the corner. The least comfortable kind of chair. 20 CB. Isn't he making millions of dollars? He's making six figures from multiple, from shoe deals, from the TV show. She got the house in the divorce. He doesn't care. She get a paycheck too? <laughs> it's like Stephen A. Smith. You have millions <laughs> of dollars. Careful, Miss. <laughs> And all you got is a TV and a pile of game tapes. TV reporter says, time for Petey Bell to take a hike. Uh, Complete with the shitty hand signal that he does. <laughs> take a hike. This newscast position. It's the same guy that was the sideline reporter. I kind of like the segment, though, as a segment. <laughs> take a hike. Whoa, really? Take a hike. It's 20 CD. You know what? I mean, if we ever get back on NBA radio consistently, we're doing take a hike for sure. Take a hike. I'm about to say, man. Thursdays will be take a hike. Friday's hot take safe zone. Clearly lost the touch he once had. This team is the least disciplined, least fundamentally sound, worst condition, least professional, most selfish, softest, <laughs> nicest, most pleasant team in the NCAA. Same note too. Sideline antics are becoming boorish and embarrassing to the alumni, the chancellor, the athletic director. 
It is time to tell Coach PD Bell take a hike. to take a hike. <laughs> Double elimination, bitch. You got to set the segment up, do his thing, and then at the end of the segment. With- yeah, you punctuate it. Yeah. yeah. Time for practice. Teaching screen setting. Ass off. He's so physical with these guys. A lot of ass padding. He's all up on him. He's essentially grinding on him. Footwork, shooting over brooms, free throws. Now he wants to talk to Tony. Yep. Look down lately. How are the classes? Actually, I'm flunking a class. You're flunking a class? What class? TV. TV? How can you be flunking TV? It's a tough class, coach. It ain't just watching the tube. What in the fuck is TV class then? If you're not watching the tube. Ass off for Tony. And by the way, just the <laughs> plot point of flunking TV is Amazing writing by Ron Shelton. So good. They come back to it. After I dropped out of San Diego State, I briefly went to a community college in Sacramento. And you flunked TV? No, there was a movie class where I thought we were going <laughs> to learn about movies. We literally just watched movies. And you flunked it? It was just an attendance-based class. Just watch movies. See, that's the difference between a community college and Western University. <laughs> <laughs> Prestigious institution. What movies do you watch? We were watching bullshit like Citizen Kane and all that shit. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, Fucking it wasn't like fun shit. Shit. Casablanca. For some reason, I thought they were watching Jade. I don't know why that was the movie that popped <laughs> in my head. <laughs> community college. Oh, it's because it's set in Sacramento, right? Wasn't it? There's a governor in it or some politician in it. Yeah, that's why. Jade is set in Sacramento? No, I think it's set in San Francisco, but yeah. they go to a governmental person so maybe they go they go to chinatown well obviously <laughs> yeah betty white juju the whole deal salute to all the old ladies around the world i love you <laughs> me too all of them shout out to old ladies oh, I, uh, shit. I like that we got flagged for putting up a fake photo that's so fucking funny dude i was dying at that because the original photo is just fine it's still easy with an old lady yeah exactly it's just not betty white nolte tells him to take care of his responsibility after he asks how's it going with that little girl she's cool not pregnant after all. He tells Mel, a.k.a. Marcus Johnson. This is so funny. To get a tutor for TV for Tony. He whispers that. Then screams across the gym to Freddie. Freddie, take Tony. Take him to a pharmacy and get him some prophylactics. Coach, come on, baby. What's wrong? Coach. Oh, come on, coach. Come on, coach. What's wrong, baby? Prophylactics 20 CB. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Everybody laughs. Now we're in an empty arena. It's just Nolte and Koozie. Looking up at the... NCSA yeah. championship banners. Totally different. Couldn't get the right. 74, 84, and 89. Maybe if you could clip in vanilla ice. Sampled them from them, but it's not the same bass line. Uh, like it goes ding, 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 ding. That's the way theirs go. Ours goes ding, 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 That little bitty change. It's not the same. Nolte says teams used to see those championship banners and be scared. Zach, my note here, Bob Cousy shoots like segregation. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he does. What the fuck is that for him? Nolte's rebounding for him. Well, he says that they're worth eight points. What does that mean? Is he talking about teams who come in and see those banners be down eight points already because they were scared? Oh, like home court advantage is plus three. Because they're mentally intimidated. Very little in life a man has control over. When you have a chance to make a statement, you have to do it. He used to make statements. Kuzi says the kids are working as hard as they can. Don't have the talent. He'd know. I need players. I need horses. Fresh horses for my men. Tonight yes. we ride. Get in here, Thank Frankfurter. Yeah. Nope. Come on, Abaru. I think I got something I need a mean to read here. Uh-oh. I mean, I need you to read Kuzi's response. It's the second line there. Okay. <laughs> because I'm filled with integrity. I will read it. I will not run away from this. <laughs> You have horses, but you need a low, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Please clip in how he says thoroughbreds. You got horses, what you need are thoroughbreds. It's so many W's. What are the speech impediments is happening There's there? There's so many W's in there. Oh, Why is he the guy playing a character? Ron Sheldon's like a crazy hoop head. And freaking. He knows Auerbach, right? That's the connection? I think so, yeah. They had his bar mitzvah at the Boston Garden. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. He shoots one left-handed. He said, man, you don't even miss. Not even left-handed. And Guzzi says, that's the aim of the game. Put the ball in the hole. And I said, this from career 37% shooter, Bob Guzzi. Same note, too. Exactly. I said, says the career 37% shooter. Is it? Is this the most shots that Bob Guzzi's ever made in a game? Well, me and I are just doing NBA radio shtick now. <laughs> well, yeah. We're canonizing it. Canon, yeah. When I recounted his playoff record before Bill Russell got there, yeah. there was a playoff game. He went one for 18. Oh, no. He was fucking awful, man. He was so bad. 35% career shooter in the playoffs. Nolte says two reasons he's incapable of cheating. 
One, if I break the rules and get caught, you get kicked out of coaching. And what's the second reason? I might not get caught. Cobra formula? Woo! Kind of. Chills formula. Bars. That's great writing. Miss the goddamn ball once, will you? Jesus Christ. Let me just say right now. My horseman, I'm pretty sure, is going to be bars because this movie has so many goddamn bars. <laughs> oh, man. Everyone's dropping them left and right. I started coming up with a lot of horsemen in the second half of this movie. Let me tell you. <laughs> Got interesting. Last game, Nolte draws a heart on the whiteboard. Show Coach you have one of these. They might win this game tonight. He asked Tony if he knows what the team is trying to do on defense to trigger the transition game. Asked if he thinks the team knows it. He's holding him personally responsible for the whole team. Understand the philosophy. The last game of the year, coach. Do you accept that responsibility? Coast is whooping that ass. This is where I have my Sean Aston digging a pool. They show the scoreboard. Coast is printed. There's absolutely no way on those 20 CB scoreboards. They're printing the name of the visiting team every night. It's just visitor on scoreboards like that. There's also at one point we see double zeros on the scoreboard as coast is dunking yeah. left and right. <laughs> yes. So it wasn't exactly the, the best attention to detail all the time. Heading into the second half, the take a hike TV reporter. Yeah. My guy, the sideline reporter asked if he's thought he might be 20 minutes away from his first losing season. I'm not answering that kind of bullshit. <laughs> I don't mean to ruffle feathers. Good luck in the second half. Coast has Allen Houston, Rodney Rogers. Coached by George Raveling. Destroying, man. Nick Nolte doesn't stand a chance. No, no. one get the pay for players. Of course. These guys all running goddamn NBA teams. It's the point. It's the point of the movie. They lose by 15. Lots of saying goodbye in the locker room. Nolte thanks them for a hell of a season. Remember, when we leave this locker room, we're not losers. We're winners, okay? Cut to we're losers. CT5 liars. <laughs> we're an absolutely mediocre basketball team. Not yet, Maze. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> yes, he'll get there. That's the beginning of it. He'll get there at the dinner for divorcees. <laughs> oh, boy. Great bunch of guys. Tony's the only player, and he's flunking TV. I love that as a running bit. Freddie says kids are heading east to play for TV exposure. Nolte thinks they've been sitting on their butt. Wait. Expected kids to come out of tradition. They haven't been recruiting yet? Dog. At all? They don't even know who the fuck these guys are. Yeah. Some top players in the country. There's a six, seven point guard in Chicago that you've never heard of. He plays for St. Joseph's, which is a powerhouse basketball school in Chicago. Oh, by the way, that's where Tony went. That's where Tony went. You got, what the fuck? No wonder you're having a losing season. Nolte wants to know what happened to that Jones kid. They lost him to the East for a big bag of dough. Maybe it's time we ante up. Nolte cuts him off. Not doing that. Not opening that Pandora's box. Freddie calls it a personal hell. Nolte wants to pull an all-nighter recruiting, so they start going through stacks of paper, 20 CB to the fullest. Fix your recruiting in one night at the end of the season. They go to Gazelle Sports Management oh. with Arliss and Suspenders. I have not seen a rinky-dink operation like this since Hendrick sponsored Team USA Junior Hockey through a diddling factory. Wow. You really couldn't wait to go through that resume again. <laughs> what the fuck? This sneaker, it looks like a Patrick Ewing combined with like a Jordan 5, but they've got a gazelle just in the middle of the shit. The gazelle's ass off, though. <laughs> it's fucking the gazelle's ass off. Throwing its head back. Yes. But this guy is a human encyclopedia. He knows everything off the top of his head. Zarlis. He knows all the players. He knows all of the deals that the players have. Yep. And he's keeping it all to himself. I wonder how much they paid this guy for a meeting. Oh, six figures. Easy. Yeah, I'm going to say they pay Robert Wall for this scene. <laughs> six figures. Easy. One guy got a phony job from an alumnus congressman. Another guy's dad's been seen driving a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Arliss tells a focus on two guys. Butch McRae, Chicago, and Ricky Rowe. These printouts are fucking hilarious. Penny Hardaway has a 26-inch vertical? It was all wrong. They say Ricky's 6'8". It says 6'6 six, six on the paper. We later get a different height for him. No one knows how tall he is. Skills, good ball handling, outside shooting, great court sense, good speed, great jump shot. Also, his father's deceased. He has a 414 GPA and got a 1060 on his SATs. That's for Butch McRae. The Butch and Ricky Show. You get those two guys, you're in the final four next year. You're living in fuck city. <laughs> Check your lease, man. <laughs> Nolte's now in Chicago. Shows up to high school. Runs into the gym where a game is happening in a matchbox. I always loved these gyms with the fishbowl. Oh, yeah. Upper deck viewing. Butch is destroying these guys toying with these kids man torching them man the original Absolutely sister jean with the coke bottle glasses is yep. loving it <laughs> i thought that was sister jean she's just younger 
here. Nick sees all the uh, college coaches there, including Tark. Oh, boy. Jim Beheim. Oh, man. Tark the Shark. I said, Tark is so ass on. And by very next notice, I take that back. <laughs> Jim Beheim, man. Beheim. <laughs> Beheim runs away with it. Oh, my God. Beheim is fucking terrible in this movie. Butch is hitting crazy shots all over the court. Leaning fade away, heavily contested. Easy. Nolte goes over to banter with the coaches and stop everything. Immediately, Tark and Beheim vault into the Bill Cower, Tommy Lasorda All Stars of complete inability to sound natural as themselves. Tark says he's a great player. I don't think we can get him in academically. He's got a 4 1 GPA. He got the 1060 on his SATs, and you coach fucking UNLV. Zach, you misunderstood. He meant it the other way around. Like, he's too high. We yeah. academically aren't good enough to get him. <laughs> None of our guys are gonna finish the semester. <laughs> They're all in academic probation. Beheim says he can't play for Nolte. Too many bad shots. Can he play for you? Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe. So ass on. Yeah, that's what I figured. Here are the mothers a pain in the ass. Nolte walks into the principal's office. All the coaches are waiting. You guys looking for Rhodes Scholars? Yeah, Rhodes Scholars that could dunk. <laughs> banter he's a charming son of a bitch man nolte walks right behind the counter the lady recognizes him he asks to see father dawkins we can send these ugly guys home lou goss walks out chewing up scenery give him the delroy lindo all in a day's work award absolute fucking ass off i think i have binoculars here somewhere maybe a telescope i don't know maybe it's orbiting earth that ass is not on this planet uh oh there's blood in the water. Must be a point guard on the block around here somewhere. All right, gentlemen. What am I bid? Give me $50 for the strapping young boy. 17 and getting bigger every day. Dig deep in your pockets, gentlemen. They say he's a potential All-American. And he can read and write. The boy can actually read and write. He got 1250 on his SATs. And ain't no problem either. His name ain't Abdul Rahman X or nothing like that. The boy's actual name is Butch. And with a name like that, he ought to have him some freckles. Now, what am I being, gentlemen? Dig deep in your pockets. Dig deep. He looks at Pete and invites him into the office. They're in the office, and Lou Gossett is telling him about the mom. He says she likes your science department more than she likes your basketball program. Nolte says the science department is doing a whole lot better. And I said banter. Yes, absolutely. He's smoking the fuck out of that pipe. You think the pipe was in the script, or does he just pull out a pipe? Nah, he just got that shit. He's just ass off, man. He tries to bullshit her. She'll eat him alive. This is the type of priest that could get me to believe in God. If it's Louis Gossett Jr. <laughs> talking about Abdul Ramad X. Smoking a pipe. <laughs> Cut to McCray's apartment building. She's got a padlock on a security gate yeah. in front of the door. Like you'd see on a convenience store or a liquor store in an urban area. I think it's a bad neighborhood, guys. <laughs> it might be. She introduces the whole family. He says her children are well-mannered. That's good Catholic upbringing. You know, I'm Catholic, too. Catholic month is back. Nolte's pumping hands. Demille Bly would be proud. Alfie Woodard is ass off with Alfred. <laughs> yeah. Butler. When she corrects him, that's Alicia. When he goes, hello, Brittany. <laughs> oh, Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> Disembodied voice. Super ass off. I love the way she's holding the cigarette. Yeah. Back to back smoking scenes. Penny comes in surprisingly not that ass on yeah he was solid it's gonna get worse though it is gonna get worse yeah but compared to Beheim, for sure who lies for a living we got ourselves a race at some point no i don't think so butch is unsure about living in la i can't even tell you how many times i typed bitch instead of bush and had to correct it whoa see the i and the u are right next to each other that's not the way you talk to a broad you understand i didn't have those problems because you just wrote penny every time penny's the reason i almost got kicked out of an arena by brian colangelo why in 1999 Oh my God, what is it? I never told you the story? No. My friend and I went to Arizona for spring training vacation or whatever. Baseball? Kings were playing the Suns. We went to the game. My friend's super Italian, like beyond Italian. Looking Italian? Biting his fist? No shit. His name is actually Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a lie. He is Italian, okay? And so we're at this Kings Suns game and his grandparents know the Colangelos. And so found out we were going to the game, gave us tickets to the game halfway up the lower bowl. And I don't even know why I did this. I was just being a shithead 17 year old. But for some reason, Penny, a player I love, I just yelled, Penny, you suck. I don't even know why. Just to like heckle. Like the one in Dallas that got <laughs> yes. kicked out by Luca. <laughs> yeah, months ago. And so I yelled that a guy turns around and says, who got you these tickets? And my friend's like, oh, you know, blah, 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 whatever. He goes, I don't care who you root for, but don't say stuff like that. Okay, whatever. We're quiet or whatever. It's still first half. And respectful 
Teenage yeah. Zach Harper said, you know what? I'm going to listen to this man that gave me this warning. <laughs> For a bit. The stranger. And so my friend realizes, <laughs> oh, shit, that's Brian Colangelo. It's the son of the owner, Jerry Colangelo. This is the game. I don't know if you remember this. I mean, Jason Kidd breaks his foot and they end up signing Kevin Johnson. Yes. Yeah. Right before the first half, Jason Kidd gets hurt. It's clearly bad. Carried off the floor. Colangelo runs down to the tunnel as he's about halfway between there. I said something to the effect of, I think this is the exact word. I said, yeah, go run and check on your meal ticket. (laughs) I mean, I nearly shit myself. He stops dead in his tracks, turns around slowly like a villain and glares at me. And I sunk in my chair like a bitch. The biggest pussy in the world just sunk in my chair. And we were just waiting the rest of the game. It didn't happen. We were just waiting the rest of the game to get kicked out. I think the Kings end up winning the game. And afterwards, speaking of Grant Napier earlier, my friend had me take a picture of him and Grant Napier because he was a big Kings fan. God damn it, man. <laughs> yeah. If you don't like that, you don't like NBA basketball. <laughs> I like the idea of Zach Harper being like, Go check on your meal ticket. Who the fuck does this guy think he is telling me to shut up? I'm Zach Harper. <laughs> yeah. What a fucking asshole, man. <laughs> 17. 17 years old, man. Okay, back to the show. Butch is not sure about living in L.A. Nolte's rubbing his forehead nervously when he asks about the courses being rigged. Mm -hmm. My players take real classes. My players do graduate. Penny said he's afraid of college courses. You have a 4-1 GPA. It's almost like the piece of paper might not have been accurate. That's strange. Probably doesn't have a 26-inch vertical either. Butch wants to know if he'll start. Nolte will give him the opportunity to start. He wants him to play point guard. Hear the offense around him. He starts using the kids, grandma, and the lamp as props to demonstrate plays. I thought this was a little much, but Nolte's really into it. They pass the pillow around, and Butch eventually throws it at a lamp, and I guess he scored? That's a basket. (laughs) Count it. Yeah. And the shot of his mom pissed off smoking a cigarette is so funny. She's not amused by any of this shit. I love the idea that this was a good pitch. (laughs) Butch is like, you know what? Coach Pete Bell might have a good offense. Now it's time for some walk and recruits position. Yes, sir. If Butch chooses to become a bingo dolphin, I plan on moving to a new and better job. I would also like a house with a lawn. My children never had a lawn. You know how the NCSA regulations work? Mr. Bell, I do not know a great deal about basketball, but I do know this. A foul is not a foul. Unless the referee blows his whistle. Bars. Bars. Miss McRae, do you really want your son to start out life by learning how to bend and break the rules? I mean, what's he going to be when he grows up and then he's out in the world? Now he's responsible and the leader of other young men. What's he going to become? I mean it. Yeah, that's a bars. What a great comeback. And he just nods. Because she delivers it. With this sincerity of, Mm -hmm. is this what you were going for with your Cobra formula Mm -hmm. of millionaire? Cut to French lick. Credence, Clearwater Revival, looking out my back door. I love this song. And I think the first time I ever heard this song was watching this movie. Yeah. Ipso facto, Blue Chips made this song incredibly popular. Nobody heard of it before this movie. From a very popular band from nope. the 70s. So this is even more of no, a stretch. No. Look it up. Look it up. You look it up. Look it up. Also, it's not even the most iconic use of this song in a movie. Big Lebowski. Actually, I don't trust you to look it up. You don't have integrity. I'm filled with integrity. The texture, the consistency, it's definitely integrity. Get it? Because Ricky's white. Oh, yeah. So we got to go to French Lick. Do, 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 knocking out my front door. Tractors, dilapidated barns. White kids playing on outdoor dirt patch hoops. He pulls up to this big estate. Hey, it's Larry Bird. Shoot free throws on a really nice court, man. Nice court, but that's probably his house. But also, Larry Bird, ass all the way off for Larry Bird. I was like, wow. A white farm boy with a basketball. Oh, I don't know, son. I don't think you're ever going to make it. Can't run, can't jump, bad back, pathetic. How's it going, Pete? Nolte spoke for free at Larry's basketball camp. He also gave him stock tips like he's fucking Ray Tango. <laughs> Same note too. Nice little exposition there. Cut the BSP. Is this the estate where Larry Bird hurt his back shoveling gravel? Yeah, it's gotta be. Nolte asked him to call Ricky Rowe whenever he got time. Let's go. So they pull up to a rural ass shack cabin piece of shit house. A shithole. People get abducted in the woods and brought back here for... <laughs> A little revenants, if you know what I mean. They hold hands to say grace before dinner, a basket of biscuits, and the yellowest, rawest 
toughest corn in our corn inventory. <laughs> that shit is not cooked. Plastic. <laughs> it's yellow, though. It's yellow as fuck. Ricky has not given college studies much thought. Ricky says, I don't even know if I want to go to college. Ricky's dad, <laughs> ass off with the look he shoots him. Jim Beaver, mm -hmm. same note too. Well, it's the glare when Pop says he'd like to take over the farm someday. Ricky says, I didn't know that. I would? Yeah. Yes, he would, actually. That's our plan. Now they're going to do a walk and talk. Ricky is interested in pussy. Yeah. In basketball. <laughs> He's so horny. <laughs> He's the CT5 horniest character. Horny. Only second to a mean. What's that supposed to mean? They have a million girls at Western, and he says... They'd like what I can do out there, I tell you. I think I could go out to California and just show them what I got out there. Is he talking about fucking or is he talking about basketball? Great question. He sounds like Uncle Rico right now. Yeah, he's shooting <laughs> on some piece of shit basketball hoop that's set up. There's no chance Ricky has handles. No, there's no way. This hoop is slightly less shitty than the really shitty hoop behind him. Yeah. So he's upgraded in the last five years or whatever. He can shoot. He's a good pick and pop there. Dad says he still has influence over where Ricky goes to college. He's told all the coaches he needs a new tractor. Didn't ask for anything. Just keeps getting offered farm equipment. No, you just asked for something. You just asked for a new tractor. I didn't ask for nothing. Whether it's bending the rules or not, don't bother me none because they ain't my rules. That's also bar, man. Yeah. Someone's going to give him a tractor, but wants his boy to be with a coach that's going to watch over him. Someone who's a church going type. Nolte was raised a Baptist. First Baptist or Southern Baptist? It's a trap. First Baptist, of course. Well, thank the good Lord, Pete. We don't think much of Southern Baptists around here. If you catch my drift. And that's when I wrote coaches a CT5 wire. He nailed that one. Not quite for me yet. There's going to be one more. <laughs> Cut to a marching band and trolley in town. Fourth of July parade. Ricky and Larry riding in the back of a Buick waving with Nolte driving. How did that happen so quick? This some bitch because he's charming. Charming and look at Bayheim here. This was the photo that you sent six months ago? Long time ago, yeah. <laughs> you called out Tark, you called out Bayheim. <laughs> <laughs> that was in my head this whole movie. Yeah. Oh man, when are we going to get to the point where yeah. <laughs> Tark and Bayheim completely fall apart? He looks like the dolphin, the bingo dolphin. The other coaches don't even matter. No, it doesn't matter. And the Tark Mason. Just a buffet of ass on. He's got ass on. Tark's killed it in the scene, man. Yeah. Bayheim, not so much. Cut to Nick Nolte at the bar. The Belgrade. Slick is waiting for him. I got a hot one for you, baby. Nobody's ever seen this kid play. Slick is the security guard from White Man Can't Jump. Yep. Take on Turkey Girl, and I'll take your girl's girl. <laughs> Never played ball in high school. Went into the army. Played in Europe. Grew eight inches in two years, but you're choking at seven. <laughs> Too big for army regulations. This is an incredible backstory for Shaq. Yeah. Played JC ball in New Mexico. He says he's never been coached at one point. I was like, didn't he play junior college basketball? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, that doesn't count. Stopped growing. Got all his coordination back. Played some bros at a gym. Kicked butt big time. Want to take a plane ride to meet him? Where is he at? Algiers. Algiers? Golden dumpster. Cut to them on a boat. Not even on a plane. Cut to Steamboat Willie. <laughs> Anytime I've seen the word Algiers in my life, I've got Algiers? <laughs> Just, that's what I always think of. Steamboat Willie. No. <laughs> oh, no. Yo, they get off on a rusty dock and this set dressing of the wood side painted with Algiers on it. Holy shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ, how hard is it to get to Algiers? Yo, man, it's tough. It's not that hard. It's just across the river. Nah, it's tough, guys. You don't know. You ain't been there. They're trekking through the brush. Nolte's furious. They pass a train track. They're going down a hill, running with a massive flock of children down the streets of Algiers. Why are the children running? They're walking past all these old black men. And I said, Nolte looks like Taffer in a black bar. <laughs> he does. Completely out of his element. They go into a secret gym with a massive crowd of people. I feel like we're going to the Kumite. Cut to Shaq catching an oop on what appears to be a toilet seat for a rim. This clearly is meant to be like a rudimentary basket that these backwoods people put together. Yeah. But it has a breakaway rim. Yes. The toilet seat is breakaway. Well, Shaq's been breaking this shit for a while now. Technically... It is more mechanically sound than the baskets that Western plays on. Yes. Jack dunks on the guy and stares at his face, and the guy is clearly trying not to laugh. Oh, absolutely. He looks ready to bust out laughing. He's any of the cast members of It's Always Sunny in any given scene. One person is always trying not to laugh. Someone goes up for a layup or a shot, and Shaq absolutely goaltends the oh my shit God. out of it. <laughs> oh, my God. That shit was practically in the rim. He wasn't lying. He's really raw. Yeah. <laughs> Never coach. Nolte's reaction face. It's so good. It's so good. He's just seen God, essentially. Is he playing in jorts? Zach put a pin in, is he playing in jorts? Okay. <laughs> because we're going to have a conversation about that. I got some outfit questions throughout. I'm not going to bull shit you pete he ain't no brain surgeon i took the sat recently scored a 520 out of a possible 1600 thanks for that exposition you get 400 just for spelling your name right that's it messed up on his name that's a classic 
SAT joke. Did it come from this movie? I don't know. Cause I think it was in an episode of Say by the Bell in like 1991. Okay. I think that's the first time I saw that joke. We'll get into more walk and talks position here. Mm-hmm. Go to some of a prop 48 and Shaq is dressed as 20 CB as I've ever seen. I remember there was a young lady in Tammy and the T-Rex that I called 20th century bitch, bitch. Mm-hmm. Move over, CT5, 20th century bitches. Oh, it's Shaq now. Shaq is number one. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> this get up. Oh, man. My dad had a lot of chef pants like that in the 20 CB. Stop! I was going to say, but these are shorts, but it's Shaq, so they probably are real pants. Yeah. That just look like shorts on him. They stopped by the church. Yo. Nick Nolte, CT5 liars, says that I grew up in a Pentecostal. This is a combination. Worst dancer and best liar. Oh, okay, fix. Let's update those files, gentlemen. <laughs> CT5 Worst Dancers, the original CT5 episode. Erica Tremblay, niece Alice, you are gone. Wow. Nick Nolte, take your place. I hate to do it. He claps at the same rhythm as Taylor Swift doing the swag surf. Oh, reference. I can't believe I'm doing this. Nomi, gone. What? No. Lauren Hill, OLI. Wow. Lauren wow. Hill. Out of the top five. I'm an honest podcaster. I got to do it. He's all over the place with this clapping. It's insane. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> also, we got Neon calling the SAT is culturally biased. That's going to come back a couple times. Yeah. Funny enough, maybe a two America situation. First time I ever thought that these standardized tests might be culturally biased. Really? Yeah. It opened your eyes. Actually, you know what? Maybe. You might be right about that. Yeah. Now Nolte's giving Butch, Ricky, and Neon a tour of Western University, or should I say the ladies of Western University? Uh, Here's the science about Western University, okay? Oh, boy. 45,000 students, 60% of them are girls that's a lot of pussy (laughs) put that in the intro (laughs) we got stats position college tours position brags position all the expositions jesus christ and these guys are horny they're not paying attention to none of this shit ocular pat downs everywhere left and right i said shut up and get to the dribbling i just want to see these guys play basketball man I don't care about the school. He got game put this to shame. We know what they do when they come on recruiting trips. I mean, they come on recruiting trips. There it is. They walk into the arena. The PA announcer does the fake starting lineup thing with each of them with inflated heights. Yep. Penny says, that's great, coach, but I'm not 6'9". The big white boy says, and I'm not 6'11". And Shaq says, but I am 7'4". And I said, golden dumpster. Uh Shaq line. Nolte says, that's how tall you're going to be when you play here. Jenny's teaching, leading a sing-along. Nolte's creeping around the corner. Cuck O'Leary. Cuck O'Leary, yep. Introduces her to Neon. Nolte whispers, she's the greatest girl. Shaq is smiling his ass off. He's so happy to be there. Jenny shuts it down. No way. She hasn't tutored college students in years. Not since Tony. She's the greatest tutor in the conference. 84 team. Got the whole front line into school. Lots of exposition on her tutoring. And I kept him in school for four years, but that was then, Neon. He wants to go play with the kids. He's working on the other prospects, says that she got Tony admitted, and look how he's doing. I thought Tony was flunking TV. Yeah. That's a tough class. You don't just watch the tube. Great callback. Great callback. CT5 liars, and he's not five, ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 no. Ben Stiller, look out. Is he making this shit up about Neon's dad being a fisherman with a boating accident that got eaten by an alligator? Oh, Absolutely. 100%. But was he a fisherman? Was any of that a truth? No, none of that's true. He's CT5 lying his ass off right now. Nobody knows what happened to his mother. Like Zach said, Ben Stiller, you're on notice. Cut the crap, Pete. Can he rebound? He's the next Elijah one. What are his SATs? Six, uh, Pete, 520. Oh, God. Well, those tests are culturally biased. biased. Yo, man. Oh, now you're a sociologist. I'll never ask you again. He's incredible. He can rebound, huh? He owns the paint. For you? Yeah. No. Oh, for Neon? Maybe. For Tony? Yes. I said, did she fuck Tony? Mm, Kind of. Is she going to fuck Neon? Who are the prophylactics for? Nolte gets excited. Don't you kiss me. Sorry. She's obsessed with rebounding. He's obsessed with her pussy. 45 minutes into the movie, it is time to introduce JT Walsh, flanked by two bimbos with nice popos. Uh, Happy walks in with two women that Dennis Reynolds drew. Look at this pimp happy. Maze clip. What's that on that beat? So two of my bitches in the club, and I know they know about each other. He's like, where you been? Oh, you know, here, there nonchalant as fuck yeah this guy has money introduces pete to two big dolphin fans Mm -hmm. this is wendy this is karen four 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 big (laughs) dolphin fans (laughs) giant 
sport. <gasps> Happy says he did a great job handling Ed the sports writer. They're all a bunch of jerks, you know. Haha. <laughs> Tells the girls go to the table. He'll be right there. Let me ask you something, Pete. Why do you hate me so much? You and the alumni you represent are a bunch of obnoxious slobs. Oh, you're pissed off. That's good. You're a better coach when you're pissed off. Yeah. That's kind of like Nolte telling Jenny that she's sexy when she's angry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happy <laughs> follows him outside to his car. Why are you walking away from me? You never walked away from anything in your life. I know you. JTS off. Strong 20 CB of coach drinking and driving. No one cares. College town, man. Throw the keys to the valet yep. and then let's keep it going. And then JT Walsh does a, a rare misstep here, bragging about all the football players he got. Mm -hmm. Quarterback, wide receiver, and he says an offensive tackle as opposed to an offensive tackle. Mm -hmm. Calls it offensive. Offensive, yeah. Like it's an offensive thing. But he's just a booster, man. My money is untraceable. It's been washed, scrubbed, laundered within an inch of its life. You're admitting to crimes, I said. And there's the last name <laughs> from Horrible Bosses too. <laughs> it reminded me of this tenant one time when I was a property manager. Mel Gibson? No, not Mel Gibson's wife told us that his checks were pristine. Oh, my checks are pristine, my friend. Okay, good for you. You got a future in politics, asshole. Why don't you run for office? These athletes generate millions of dollars for the university. What do they get? Nothing. What do you get? You get a multi-year contract. You get a six-figure shoe deal so your team can be a walking billboard, and that is all legal. And then you get another six figures for that lousy TV show. Get out of my face. Happy is actually the good guy of this movie. Well, 100%. This speech, for sure. CT5 Heroes. We owe them this money. We owe it to him. He's right. He's ahead of his time. As he drives off. I always remember that from the trailer. Tea kettle blowing, just like Nick Nolte's blood pressure. Jenny's tutoring neon. Spain is north of the U.S., Canada is south. Track's too smug. Yeah. He broadens with 50 bucks and he gets it immediately all the way down to Costa Rica. Calls her a fake liberal and a racist. Yes, and that's <laughs> bars, ladies and gentlemen. Because that was fucking before that was a thing. Yeah, man. Shaq invented it. Yep. Well, Ron Sheldon invented it. Well, Shaq will tell you he invented it, I'm sure. Joined the army because his hood was so dangerous. Invaded the Persian Gulf for vacation. I make my own sense. So why are we here? Maybe I want to go to college. Maybe I don't. So she bets him $100 for real that he can't score 700 Shaq will do it in his sleep. For $100, I'll score 800 Nolte shows up to check in. Ask Neon how it's going. <laughs> Your old lady's tough. <laughs> my ex old lady. Now no, I, I see why you left the bits. <laughs> Golden dumpster. Also... 20 CB, or is this just proving that she's a tough cookie? She can handle the banter. Mm, I think both, actually. I think it's more the latter because she laughs along. She laughs and she says he needs a kick in the ass. He needs a good kick in the butt. And I said, tension? Banter? Test in two weeks. Shaq says, get her money ready. Butch and Ricky are working out with the team. Nolte's getting horny. They're kicking ass in jeans like Larry Bird in winning time. In jeans. Now, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> playing basketball in George slash jeans. In fucking sane insane but yet i think we've all done it oh absolutely i did it so much in high school i would rather run into the ocean in my jeans than play basketball in them like michael and jaws the revenge yes it is so <laughs> uncomfortable your legs get so hot chafed within an inch of their life and let's not talk about the ball sack situation. Oh, no, no, no. That's it's sweltering. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Don't be wearing a belt either because then it starts to cut into your side. Mm -hmm. Not even wearing a belt. Playing in jeans is insane. It's nuts. Beltless. And yet, Beltless. we've all done it. Yeah, sometimes you're just forced. A lot. Not just once or twice. Dozens of times. Now Nolte's breaking down game film of Indiana, talking about shutting down Calbertini. Film session. Indiana. When do they play Indiana? Months from now, it's a big game. Look, he recruits last minute, but he prepares for game one way early. Gordon Bombay, take note. We don't want to get the ball right, so let's shut him down. Oh, simple. That's it. Just shut down Calvert Cheney. Yeah. Calvert Cheney was America's sweetheart. Oh, absolutely. This was every single fourth year senior you could think of rolled into one. He was unstoppable. He was the guy that had the biggest disconnect between people who watch and analyze college basketball, people watch and analyze the NBA. Because mm -hmm. the college guys thought Calvert Cheney is going to be the greatest NBA player ever. And all the NBA guys were like, I don't know. He's going to be an okay player. Yeah. This bingo walks in. Ricky wants to talk about. <sighs> no, don't do that. Well, no. Let's talk about a little bit more. I got to shake my head. I'm blown away. These girls are amazing. Shudder at it. <laughs> he wants to come to college. Leaves a little bit of business we have to discuss. Figure a white blue chip. Ah! Ah! 
He said it. He said it. There it is. Athlete like myself deserves something extra. Easy, J. King. Looking for about 30 grand? That's it? Well, it's... Permanent renter? Well, that's 60-something grand in today's money. 20 CB, bro. Come on, man. And it's in Indiana. It's French Lake. 30 grand. He can probably buy the whole town. That tractor was at least 50. Nah, man. He's buying Larry Bird's estate with 30K. He's choking at 30K. Like to have it in cash, toss in one of those gym bags you got. Seen a lot of things now. I've been around a lot. They've offered me this much money before. Match their offer. He's theirs. <laughs> That's about how he delivers. <laughs> He's awful. Freddie and the other assistants are so uncomfortable because they know what's about to happen. Nolte. Get the hell out of here. Loses. Take that damn uniform off. His shit. You don't deserve to wear it. Kicks the stool again. Cut to Kuzi saying he knows nothing unless Bill Russell tells him. I call him a coward here. Oh, he's such a coward. This is a combination of I don't believe the character. I don't believe Kuzi. I don't believe this scene. Can we get it over with already? It's Kuzi being a coward, which is something he's done before. And he says he wants no part of this. Clip walk hard. Get out of here, Dewey. What are y'all doing in here? It's called cocaine. And you don't want no part of this shit. Cocaine? What's it do? It turns all your bad feelings into good feelings. It's a nightmare. I'm thinking maybe I'd like to try me some of that cocaine. You don't want no part of this, Goosey! <laughs> Nolte's going through it, man. He is stressed. Face in his hand, looking up at banners, pulling his hair. Here's a fake crowd from the past. Drives to Happy's house. Massive columns out front, so you know it's a rich guy. He's sitting in the car contemplating. This is a 90s-ass windbreaker that Nolte's wearing. Also, Happy, this dude's living a pimp's life. He just has cheeks on parade. Ooh. Everywhere he goes, it's just cheeks. In that 20CB sweatsuit athleisure tennis outfit yep nolte rejects coffee just wants to know how it works you don't want to know friends of the program will take care of it i hate friends of the program friends of the program horseman i could hear john calipari taking notes in 1994 <laughs> yes this whole movie is john calipari yeah when they go to meet with robert wool calipari yeah yeah but you hate losing more relax we're gonna be on top again is robert wool worldwide west <laughs> is that who he is in this movie wool wide west wool wide west <laughs> <laughs> I got a little confession to make too. I screw a hell of a lot better when we're winning. Don't, Don't you? you? Huh? <laughs> Ass off, dude. Time for a recruiting violations montage. Clip this John Lee Hooker money song. The best thing in our life is free, but you can give it to the birds and bees. I need some money. Need some money. Oh, yeah. What I want. Your love give me such a thrill, but your love don't pay my bills. I need money, need some money, oh yeah, what I want. I need some money, honey, I need some money right away. I need some money so bad, I need some money.